and welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten. But to get things started, what are we drinking? Le Marchand's East India Porter. Today we are going to be featuring 1981's Eyes of a Stranger. This movie was directed by Ken Widerhorn. He did a couple of uh, notable horror movies, Shockwaves, Return of the Living Dead 2. Yeah. The only good thing about this movie is really the poster. <laughs> Ron Kurtz wrote this movie and uh, he also wrote Friday the 13th Part 2. This movie stars Lauren Tews and she's mostly been in TV, lots and lots of TV. Jennifer Jason Lee is in this and she had quite the 80s career, let's say, as, as well as into the 90s, but she was in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. John DeSanti is also in this and he was in another 80s classic, <laughs> classic, uh, Batteries Not Included. This movie starts out with a uh, photographer and he's walking around getting shots. He comes upon this woman's body. Finds her through the viewfinder of his camera. Yeah, it's cool. And that'd be fucking scary for yeah. real. It cuts to a uh, news footage, a couple of news anchors talking about a killer that's on the loose. But he's still on the loose! We see a waitress and she's getting off work. There's all these shadows, right? It's the dead of night. And somebody's following her. She gets into her apartment. The phone rings. It's a guy on the other end. Debbie! Then he phones her again. I'm gonna kill you, Debbie. Damn. You bitch! <laughs> yeah, you damn bitch! She gets her boyfriend to come over. There is somebody in the fucking apartment and he takes a meat cleaver and just takes the guy's <laughs> head right <laughs> off. Yeah. And she ends up seeing his head in the fish tank. It's all floating with all <laughs> yeah. those bubbles coming yeah. through it. From here we get introduced to Jane and she's one of the news anchors that I mentioned earlier. Jane is living with her sister and she's kind of taking care of her. She can't hear, speak, or see. She's like this because she was kind of terrorized as a kid. She was abducted. One day uh, when Jane's coming home from work, she notices a black car and a guy coming out of it and he's kind of changing his clothes. So, hmm, that's a little weird. We see a woman working in an office late at night and she's the only one. She ends up getting a phone call and it's that same fucking guy. So she gets freaked out, she takes off, she gets into the elevator and he phones her in the elevator. Yeah. I don't know how he got the number <laughs> yeah. for that. He gets out of the elevator and she gets into her car and you think everything's safe and ding, right from behind. If Halloween has taught you anything, yeah. <laughs> fucking check your back seat. It's nighttime out in some remote area and you see the car of the killer dumping the body which he just killed. And there's a couple nearby and the killer like in real life gets stuck after <laughs> dumping the body you can see the tire yeah. he's probably all oh, fuck the guy is trying to get all with the lady in the other car and ah he can't get his mind on it because all he can hear is this guy <laughs> trying to get out of this hey buddy you need any help and yeah. The guy stumbles back to his car, and then from behind, she... Yeah. Oh, man. Jane is in her parking spot again. She sees this car again. She's been reporting on the murders, and she knows all the details. And like, well, this guy was out in the mud for some reason. I just saw him changing his bloody clothes the other day. And, mm. Yeah, it's a little weird. Yeah. She starts rummaging through his apartment. This guy comes home. Yeah, from she, grocery yeah. shopping, too. He's got his minute made. <laughs> and able to make her way onto the balcony without him seeing her. Goes out to the balcony and, well, no one's there. Yeah. Then you see her hanging on the side of the balcony. Show the far shot. It's like, holy shit. <laughs> looks over the edge and she quickly like whoop, oh, slips just, into the next balcony <laughs> like oh my god like if you don't do that perfectly you're fucking toast <laughs> yeah so she decides to phone this guy and stalk him the way he stalked the other women she calls him a phone freak someone being on his tail doesn't stop him mm. he goes to the strip club where there's this dancer doing this sick <laughs> dance with his legs. He follows her home and she's taking a shower. Turns around and through that glass sees the face. Yeah. Like, oh, right yeah. there. It's like, holy shit. And Jane is on the news re reporting these murders and she lets it slip. Yeah. She calls him a phone freak. She's the one that called <laughs> me. So she's still on his tail and she goes to his place to kind of try to find some evidence. And he goes to her place. Sister is there like making a sandwich or whatever and she can't hear him or see him. Yep. And he's just standing there. He can do whatever he wants. <laughs> yep. 
And we're going to end the plot there. So if you want to see what happens at the end of Eyes of a Stranger, finish watching the movie. The characters, right? We've got two strong female leads. It's quite a twist because she's not running from him screaming. Yeah. It's she's pursuing him. Yeah. You know, it's the other way around. He's not stalking her. She is stalking him. Towards the end, he doesn't even want anything to do with her. Yeah. He has his eyes on the sister. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which is kind of neat, yeah. right? So even though she's the main character, he's never after her. Yeah. You know, which she's... is kind of neat. Like you said, strong female leads. You have another one, which is perceived to be a very weak character because mm -hmm. of her disability. In reality, she's very strong. Right. And you'll notice that when you finish watching the movie when it comes down to him and her at the end, like, no, she's not a weak character. Exactly, yeah. And I mean, throughout the movie, you see women who have all their senses that yep. can't fight worth shit. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it's an interesting dynamic. This movie bridges the gap, I find, between the 70s and 80s quite well. More of a 70s feel for the character development and more of the plot. Then it kind of ramps up to more 80s slasher for the kills and for like the pursuit. It's not a whodunit style slasher. You know who the killer is pretty early in the movie. Where are they going to take this now? Because obviously that's not the payoff. You know that she's pursuing the right person yeah. and it's not a red herring like it usually is. Then for me it gets really interesting. It's like okay well how is she going to get this guy? Because right. she's got no evidence. Just all a hunch that happens to be right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. None of the the points in this movie are necessarily original. You got the phone calls like in Black Christmas. The high-rise apartment buildings like someone's watching me and yeah. rear window. Yeah. So it's not exactly original, but it's how they use all those concepts to make yeah. this movie, which is really cool, yeah. right? They, they put their own spin on everything. The killing scenes are pretty good too. Like there's some good 80s style slasher type oh, yeah. kills. Very Jason Voorhees style before mm -hmm. that was a thing, you know? That's right, yep. Yeah. On top of the kills, we have to mention that this is probably one of the movies that Tom Savini is not well known for. That's right. Because yep. he did do the effects on it. Yeah. And for me, it came out of nowhere, like looking up the movie, like, what, Tom Savini did this? It does show because the the effects are fucking great. Yeah. The suspense in this movie, I think, is really good. Like, it's, as soon as she's on his tail and pursuing him, the suspense kicks right up. And there's a couple of those scenes, man. Like, when she's hanging off that <laughs> yeah. balcony, you're like, oh, my God. Like, because it's either up or down. Right. And up, you're caught. Caught. And down, you're dead. Dead, right? <laughs> it's so, either way, you're dead, yeah. you know? And then the scene at the end where her sister is alone with the killer... And she's unaware he's there and he can do whatever he wants. That yeah. that scene, man, that's like, oh, it just gives you the creeps. <laughs> and that's the cool thing about this movie is that it everything feels natural because this is like a real killer. It's not, yeah. you know, he's not like Jason right. or anything like that, right? He's just a dude. He's just a man. And, yeah. and the movie kind of plays out sort of realistic, too. So that's it, and if you're in the mood for a good, like, hot pursuit type thriller, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, definitely check out Eyes of a Stranger. It kind of takes a lot of the slasher tropes and flips it, does a lot of familiar things a bit of a different way. Exactly, and very well, Yeah, too. So until next time, keep drinking. And dancing. <laughs> dun, 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 dun.